Hello, welcome to this short demonstration of using SC, SC Flow from MSC Software to model fluid flow in this ducting system. The system we're going to model, um, shown here on the screen, has, has uh, a confluence of two different flows, one at 80 centigrade, one at 20, that merge this, uh, this T-piece and flow around out through here. So we're going to run through the simple steps to uh, build the model, set up the conditions and run it and then look at the, the output afterwards. So we go to the SC Flow preprocessor. Um, you have a navigation window over here, which takes you down through the steps you need to follow. So the first thing I'm going to do is import a part file. So we import Parasolid, but uh, all sorts of other CAD systems are supported. So here I have my, my duct model. So this is the, the solid model of the, the, uh, the duct itself. But what I actually need in order to simulate this is, the, is a model of the cavity within it. So I'm going to need to uh, seal it off. So put caps over the, the two inlets and the outlet and then merge it and then extract the solid internally. So to do that, I go to the modify parts menu. And the first thing I'm going to do is create covers. So I'm going to make them 0.01 meters thick. And I can simply pick the faces that I wish to close. And I can preview what I'm going to do there and then execute it. So it's created those caps. The next thing I want to do is unite solids. And actually the easiest way to do this is to pick them all with a, a shift pick in the menu like that, um, and then execute that. So what I now have is a solid, single solid representing the whole pipe. We're back into modify, and I can now extract empty regions. So just by picking that solid and execute that, I now have in the tree, I have the outer rim, but I also have a model of the cavity within it. So I can actually at this point delete the outer part. Right, I need to make one more change to this. Um, the, the inflow length at the two ends is too short. Uh, we won't get a fully developed flow by the time it reaches the parts of interest. So what I'm going to do is extend those. So back into modified parts and then in edit solid, I'm going to thicken that face and I'm going to do it by 0.3 meters. So I simply press pick those two faces and execute and you can see it extends that happily. So I now have the total fluid volume that I wish to analyze. So I can click on the next option down, which is build analysis model. And it basically topologizes this by using a, a mesh, a tetrahedral mesh. So now I have my volume. The next thing I need to do is define the fluid. So I go into fluid, liquid, and I want to make this out of water and apply that to there. And now I need to do some region registration. Essentially what this is, is assigning uh, tags, names, labels to various faces of the part that I can use later on to define boundary conditions. So if I start with inlet one, and I'm gonna pick that face there, register it and then inlet two pick that face and register it and then lastly I'm going to have the outlet and I'll pick that face and register it okay so I now have that ready to go the next option down is conditions so this is where I set up the whole analysis so by default it's just a flow so I want to turn on heat um, Basic setting, I've, it will go through steady state analysis with up to 400 uh, increments to arrive at a steady state condition. I skip ahead to the flow boundary, see the names that I registered before. So inlet one, what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to give it a velocity of one meter per second and a temperature of 80 centigrade. Inlet two, is going to have a velocity of one and a default temperature is 20 so I can leave that alone and then lastly the outlet all I'm going to do here is I'm going to give it a static pressure a zero static pressure 
Um, the rest of this I can actually leave and I can now go into meshing. So the octree parameter is a way of uh, subdividing up the space for the subsequent meshing. Um, so I'm just going to target it at about 50,000 elements and hit create octree. And really what this is doing is, is subdividing space, as you can see, into uh, regular uh, cubic elements, which it can then use to create the, the final um, mesh that we use. So I'm now ready to go, so I shall save that. I'm just going to execute that. So what this does is it will generate the mesh um, and it will create the files I need to run the analysis. So I hit OK and I execute it. OK, so the meshing process took uh, about 45, 50 seconds to run through. And now what you see is a beautiful polyhedral mesh. Um, you can see there's a, a lovely boundary layer here and then our polyhedra get progressively larger towards the centre of the, the volume there. So with that, I'm ready to exit and go to the solver. So to, to run this, um, I just open the file it's created. While the analysis is running, um, you can see here from a previous one, it generates uh, a plot of the convergence status, um, tracking things like velocity, pressure, temperature, uh, and the fluctuation in them. And when the fluctuation all gets down to uh, uh, minus fourth order here, so there's very little fluctuation, it considers it converged. You can also look at things like maximum and minimum velocity. So you can see as the convergence improves, the, uh, the, the curves get more level. And the same thing with temperature, minimum, maximum. So I'm going to open the one I just ran. And then I'm going to execute that. So that will take a couple of minutes to run. So we'll resume once that's completed. OK, so the analysis is completed. Uh, calculation time, 1 minute 22 seconds, uh, 239 cycles. So you can see my convergence status and my, my pressure my velocity, etc. And now I can go into post-processing the results. I go to the post-processor here and I open the files. So open that up. By default, it creates uh, a cut plane through here. So one of the things I can do on that plane is I can look at, for example, the uh, velocity vectors. So you can see how the flow converges through here um, and then the, the velocity profile as it comes around the bend and out the other side. I can also look at, for example, contours of temperature. So there you can see the, the hot fluid coming in from the side, the cold fluid coming in the main flow and see how they, uh, how they merge and the temperature profile, the temperature gradient uh, reduces as it comes around the bend to flow out here. We can do all sorts of other stuff with this. We can look at uh, streamlines, we can look at isosurfaces, um, but for the purposes of this little piece of analysis here, what we're really interested in is the, is the mixing of the two flows. So you can see that, that quite elegantly with, with that plot there. So that's just a, a simple example of how you would go about doing an internal flow problem with SC Flow. SC Flow is available within the MSC1 token licensing system. So if you're using it for, for static FEA, for example, with Nastran, you would need only 18 tokens to run uh, an analysis such as this. So for the, for the same sort of token usage level, you could be running some CFD. It might be for uh, generating temperature loads to, to put into your structural model. It might be to look at pressures um, again, for your structural model. So uh, thanks very much for your attention.